If you look for the phrase, how clouds are formed on YouTube, you will find that there are a lot of contradicting and confusing explanations out there. Here you will understand clearly how it works, and you will be stunned with what I have to show you in the end. But first, how did it all start? Once upon a time in September 1894, in Cambridge, a young physics graduate named Charles Thomas Rees Wilson witnessed a spectacular phenomenon. A glory, Wilson called it. It looked like a faint figure appeared in a low cloud, with a misty and dim rainbow surrounding the figure's head. We now know this to be a behavior of light, and we still call this phenomena glories. It happens when the shadow of the observer is cast on top of fog or a cloud trapped in a valley. The head is then surrounded by colored rings, with the red end of the spectrum being on the outer edge. But how does it relate to cloud formation? Well, this event inspired Wilson to do something now known as the cloud chamber. Its purpose was to create what we all wanted to make as kids, a cloud. So here's your recipe for creating your own cloud at home. Wilson's cloud chamber centered around the principle that when pressure dropped, the moist air would be condensed. I'll explain exactly how it is done, but first we need to understand how the cloud chamber operates. The glass container where the cloud would be eventually formed would have a piston on the bottom. A piston, for our purposes, is the mechanism that creates the pressure drop in order to condensate the moist air. Its function is simply to move up and down. This container was connected to a large glass globe via a device called a valve. A valve is the device that we use to control the passage of air through a space. The air that filled the glass globe would be pumped out, thus creating a vacuum inside of the globe, while the glass container located above the piston would suck in all the moist air. When the valve was opened by Wilson, the air would rush into the vacuum of the glass globe. This rush would pull down the piston extremely quickly, less than a hundredth of a second, thus dropping the pressure significantly. Well, how does dropping pressure relate to cloud formation? Here's how. Pressure and temperature are directly proportional. Imagine we take a box with air particles inside. If we add another box to it and thus increase the space, the particles will spread out more. Remember, the temperature of any object is determined by how fast the particles move. The faster they move, the hotter is the object. Well, the slower they move, the cooler it is. When air molecules spread out more, the vapor's temperature decreases because the particles move more slowly. This drop in pressure, and therefore also in temperature, means that the particles would go through a process called condensation, meaning that they would turn from gas into liquid, from air into water. This is exactly what would form a cloud inside of the container, since a cloud is a cluster of droplets of water as liquid, not as gas. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this video, and also support me on Patreon so that I can continue making videos like this. From that, another question arises. Why doesn't the water just drop to the ground? Why do these liquid droplets stay up floating? There is a misconception people had at the time and still have nowadays. It was assumed that the clouds formed because these tiny water particles would cling on to the tiny dust particles in the air, resulting in the floating water. Hence, Wilson used an electrical charge to attract and pull away all the dust particles from the container. And he had done it long enough to make sure that absolutely no dust particles were left in the air. Wilson assumed that when the pressure would drop, the water that formed would simply fall to the bottom of the container. And yet the seemingly impossible happened. Condensation still occurred, and the cloud still floated in the air. Wilson tested for months and months and found that dust was not necessary for condensation. He even found that the faster the pressure dropped, the thicker were the clouds produced. But it is important to mention that dust in the atmosphere does help the condensation process by providing a surface where the droplets in the air can attach themselves and therefore float, just as it happens on a cold cup during a hot summer day, for example. By 1896, when X-rays were newly discovered, Wilson tested it on his cloud chamber. He discovered that the droplets were not attaching themselves to dust particles, but to ions. Ions are atoms that were transformed from neutrally charged to positively or negatively charged atoms. This process is called ionization. This happens when radiation waves are sent to the atoms inside of the glass box. And as a consequence, the photons that compose the radiation provide energy to the electrons of the atom, hence knocking them off. Now, the chamber would be composed of positive atoms, those that lost electrons through the ionization process, and negative atoms, those that eventually absorbed the free-moving electrons. 
We know that positive and negative particles attract each other, which explains why dust is not needed for these particles to be attached together and for condensation to take place. By the way, the only reason these tiny droplets float in the air is because they are so light that the gravitational force acting on them cannot overcome the electromagnetic force that the other particles exert on the droplets of water. But these tiny droplets float in the air, not because gravity does not act on them or because they fall so slowly that we cannot notice, as some people on the internet say. When the piston moves and the pressure drops, the particles hang on ions and float in such a way. This is exactly what happens in a lightning storm. The particles which are negatively charged or have an extra electron go to the bottom of the cloud, while positively charged particles on the Earth, or the ones that are missing an electron, bundle on Earth's surface in order to unite it with the negative particles in the cloud. The lightning that occurs is exactly this. The negatively charged particles move towards the positive ones. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a video about how lightning works. And this is how clouds are created. This video was inspired by the book Connections by James Burke. If you like this video, I'm sure you will enjoy this one as well. See you later.